this is an attempt to um, summarize everything that I've learned about uh, Krobo's algorithm in the past um, days and weeks since I took on the uh, breaking down the algorithm again uh, since my last since I did my last videos. So it's just a, summar a summarizing attempt without touching any maths and uh, basically keep in mind that um, if you want to know all the details just you know feel free to go over all the other videos and the, the, you can kind of see the story the history of you know when did I start taking a look at, taking a look at the algorithm and how has my understanding evolved and what's the path that I follow to get to the place where I am that's important as well so but let's let's get to let's get to the to the summary of my learnings in here so uh, we'll we'll do this part by part parts by parts. How do you break down the algorithm? The way that I usually do that is I break down the circuit in different bits and pieces. And to do that, I take a look at different at, at the way this is structured. Usually, when you see things that are sandwiched between Hadamard's, um this means that this is a spot where you should probably take a look at it from a system perspective and not just operation at, at, at each operation. For example, the these is you know, and this is a mo this is. Grover's diffusion operator or amplitude amplification and this is basically uh, something that is worth taking a look at at the sort of a, what's the effect that this has at the, at the system level not at each you know um, operation layer like a Hadamard like first Hadamards then knots then this control control Z then knots and then Hadamards the fact that you're doing an un that you're uncomputing so you're doing the same things until you get to the control control knots and then you're going back with you're kind of reversing that that also is an indicator that you should take a look at that as a pack um, rather than single operations it's it's going to be intuitively easier but it you know it, yeah it's just just a trick that I use um, and by the way this is the most common form of uh, implementing uh, Krobo's algorithm based on what I've seen out there when you google around there's more compact forms of these but you know this is something that if you take a look at the videos uh, that I've done before that you will pay I'll, I'll attach some of those things that's one piece of it which basically repeats here right and the, the whole idea is you can repeat that as many times as you want until not not as many times as you want but as many as there's a certain number where it kind of gives you the optimal uh, result and then it just um, you're starting to lose the probability again if I you repeat that again so you have to find that sweet spot where that works um, and then we've got what are the other blocks we've got we've got our Oracle in here and this is a particular implementation of the Oracle it doesn't have to be this way this is just for the sake of the example the Oracle is phasing basically 101 one. that's the element that you find at the end um, and you're not supposed to really in reality the assumption of the algorithm is if we have an Oracle that is able to do such thing then the algorithm makes sense but this is supposed to be a black box right but let's keep it open for now and you've got a last element which is your initial superposition in here so which it doesn't have to be that superposition which is like the plus 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 like it's starting all from zeros you can have any kind of superposition but if you do have any kind of superposition then you you have to change the way these things look like inside because these things have to be this part has to be designed in a way that it matches the superposition you're using so because the whole concept of Grover's algorithm is um, at an intuitive level is that you start with the superposition then you basically phase you add a phase to the element like the oracle is kind of encoding in the phase it's encoding the elements you you want to you want to find in that superposition's phase and so what you're going to be doing with the diffuser operator is you're going to be kind of rotating in the direction of that particular superposition so that you take advantage of the fact that um, <laughs> it, it, it's actually tricky to explain oh it's it's um, definitely take a look at the videos before where I really go through the details um, myself but um, so the, the the let's let's do it the other way around so let's summarize it let's go step by step so you first have a superposition we all understand that good then you're phasing so that's that's step one then you're you're adding that that particular phase right so um, 
uh, if uh, so you're, you're phasing that particular item. Now the trick here to understand Gorbachev's algorithm intuitively without getting into any maths is to understand is to take a look at that at that phasing um, from a uh, an interference perspective. That's what that's what I um, that's what helped me understand that. So what do I mean by this? Let's make a, a smaller example quickly here. Let's assume we have only two qubits. And let's assume our superposition is is like this one, right? So and it's all pla it's it's all positive. What let, let's say that our oracle flags like one zero, right? So this effectively means mathematically, and I know I said I wouldn't touch any maths, but those are just pluses and minuses. This is really, you know, da -da. it's the most basic stuff possible. So the effect of that kind of oracle would be to to add a minus in here, right? Now, what I'm saying is, let's try to think about it from an interference perspective. How would you achieve that? How would you achieve that superposition, right? Um, after uh, destructive interference, well, what what you could think of is that you say, yeah, you know, if you um, if you basically add uh, if what well, you're basically because you're basically er, I don't know if that's the right color, but you basically have a plus originally, right? So if you're adding uh, if you add to this mix, like, say, two components like that, right, then one of them cancels out, and then you have, then you end up with that state that that's the one you want, right, with the minus in the one zero component. And that would be kind of destructive interference. Um, let me get. So let me remove this, remove this, and now I'll try to explain <laughs> where I'm trying to get there. So, so here you ha you got like this, and here you got like that, right? So that's the thing is, if we think from that perspective, then now let's imagine that that's the state we have. Sure, some of those things cancel out, but let's imagine that that let's consider them all there, because that's going to help us understand what that. Um, diffuser operator is doing. So what the diffuser operator is, the operator is doing is essentially um, what it's doing is it's phasing all the elements of a particular superposition. So that particular superposition is defined by the control control uh, Z in here. So in this case this box is basically changing the sign on all the elements that um, belong to a superposition that's seeded by qubits in the state 1, 1, 1. So or that would be the same as a superposition resulting or the superposition represented by the minus, 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 right? That's why, and so, and so when you do that, right, um, sorry, this is not true. Because of the nodes in here, that's the that's the zero zero zero. So that's the plus 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 exactly. Uh, so that's what this box is doing. I was mixing my I was mixing this because of the video the the previous video that I did on that. So so that's what this box is doing is phasing all the elements of that superposition. That's a plus plus plus. And actually, that superposition that's plus 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 is basically this part of of of, of our state. So it's basically adding a negative, like it's fa it's basically phasing all that. So if you pay attention now, if you keep in mind that that our full state is this, right? So if you change the sign of all of them for like a minus, so they're not anymore like that, they're now minus, minus, oh, that's awful. So they're all now minus, 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 minus. Now you realize that this element and this element and this element do not have ne uh, a destructive interference anymore. They have a constructive interference. So this means that that element now in that state adds up and becomes and, and gets a much bigger amplitude in comparison to the other ones. 
right so and that's the gist of of the summary here so that's that's what that's what this is doing so that's why I say to understand Grobus algorithm intuitively without the mass it really helps to see phasing the phasing operation or the oracle as in um, from an interference perspective not just like changing the the, the sign somewhere and I guess that's yeah I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure that's the correct way to think about it but it, it definitely it definitely seems to work <laughs> so that's my current understanding and basically that's it so that's Corbo's algorithm you do that over and over again until that number grows enough um, that uh, you know that, that it doesn't spill over right and then so you you have the result you want because you're growing that amplitude um, yeah that's basically my attempt to cleanly summarize what I've learned in the past days and weeks and um, I'll try to link and update the previous videos where I claim to you know have an actual explanation that I was not happy with I think that's a much better explanation um, and I'll leave the this here for now and I might take on the algorithm later on if I discover new things but I think that pretty much summarizes the the learnings